Somewhere between the edge of being alive and feeling dead Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're just going to talk a little bit more in depth on Docker containers, uh, mounting volumes, and uh, how Docker works within TrueNAS, but a lot of the information on this video will be applicable even outside of TrueNAS scale. Uh, we are, as you can see here, on Electric Eel 24.10.0, uh, and so that's the latest version in November of 2024. And uh, let's jump right into this. So uh, we'll go over here to the apps, and we're just going to talk a little bit here about. Uh, let's go look at Docker, uh, their documentation section about mounts. So you can see um, <clears throat> they talk about bind mounts, and this is uh, if you need to map uh, information. Uh, outside of your Docker container into your Docker container and an, maybe an example of that would be uh, your Docker container creates a log folder for log files something very common or configuration or something like that remember that Docker containers are uh, ev any changes made during the execution runtime are lost when you restart that Docker container it's kind of like a read-only environment not exactly because you can if you can connect into the environment through a, a shell you can make changes and stuff but the moment that environment restarts you lose those changes so that's not good if you need to keep log files and if you want to maintain the configuration changes after a restart well then you need to start looking at something like mounts especially if those changes are uh, in a database or in a file which is not persisting across restarts of the Docker container. Um, so let's get into this. Um, I'm going to start off by talking about Home Assistant and I'm going to show I have two different configurations here of Home Assistant and we're going to look at the first one and I'm going to click on edit because I want to show this concept. It took me a while to get my head wrapped around how this is done in TrueNAS. If I scroll down to the bottom here, um, we can see that the storage configuration, the Home Assistant config storage, uh, is of type IX volume. And this is uh, sort of the built in type of uh, TrueNAS. And if I click on the little help here, it says IX volume is a data set created automatically by the system. Host path is a path that already exists on the system. And if you look at the documentation for TrueNAS, they say like IX volume is good for testing, non-production stuff. You want to use host path for production images uh, of your Docker images. And the reason for that is <clears throat> your configuration, uh, you want it stored somewhere that you can back up, that you can uh, destroy your uh, instance and, and recreate it and just point it to that configuration so you can recover from let's say a system that gets corrupt or whatever you want that configuration information to be stored outside of the container somewhere that you can back up and uh, make changes and and it can be reused across restarts right you can make changes anytime you want and you're good to go so this is not that situation so IX volume um, is sort of a built-in way of, of letting changes be persisted, yes, but if I delete Home Assistant from this screen, if I delete it, and I go to create a new one, all those changes are gone. They're not stored anywhere. They kind of get deleted with the row here. Whereas, if I go into Home Assistant X, let's see what the difference is here, how I have it configured differently. <clears throat> so if I scroll down to that same area, um, uh, where is it? Configuration Home Assistant. No, that's Media Home Assistant Config Storage. This one I picked Host Path, a path that already exists on the system, and I just navigated to a data set location that I've created, 
Um, I created a data set called Docker App Data. I created a sub data set called Home Assistant and a sub data set under that called Config. This is just the location on the system uh, that I want to be able to back up and and keep it around even after I restart the container. And if I even if I delete um, the application here, all that config data is still going to be stored in the data set. So I can just delete and recreate a new image and I still have all the Home Assistant configuration because I used HostPath. Let's take a look at my data sets real quick so that we can see that in action. So here's that Docker app data. In here we have Home Assistant and in Home Assistant we have config and that is exactly how I set up this host path configuration for Home Assistant. <clears throat> okay, so now hopefully we understand all of that. We understand the difference between an IX volume versus host path. An IX volume, anything that uh, is stored in that IX volume will get deleted when you delete the uh, Docker container from your apps area. Whereas when you used host path, Anything that's stored in that host path, configuration, any data, logs, files, anything like that, they will still be there even after you delete the app, which means you can recreate it easily and you have all the settings, etc., and the history. All right, so that's kind of a quick summary uh, to get us started. So just remember, generally speaking, you lose all your changes in a Docker container when you reboot, unless you mount volumes, okay, um, as a sort of general rule. So um, let's talk a little bit now about how I created this secondary Home Assistant-X app. What's interesting was, okay, I've already set up this first one. And once again, as we go in here, <coughs> we take a look and we see that it's uh, the configuration for Home Assistant, Home Assistant Config Storage, it's stored using IX Volume. I would like to extract that configuration out of this into a host path um, on my TrueNAS scale uh, configuration because I want to keep that configuration around so that if I delete this app, for some reason I have to recreate it, I don't lose the configuration. So how do I extract the configuration from this example? And this may not be the same for all apps. You'll have to do a little bit of reading. But how do I extract the configuration specifically from Home Assistant and pull it into uh, you know, a data set that I can then use to create a new instance of Home Assistant if I need to down the road? So one thing I... I did a little bit of looking around and uh, when you take a look at uh, Home Assistant's website they say that you should go into settings you should go into system you should go into repairs and because I'm running this in Docker I have to click over here and go into system information and it's gonna show that I have configuration directory is stored in the docker container under a folder called config so everything under config any files and subfolders it's all there so armed with that information I, I said to myself is there a command a docker command that I can use to copy files out of a docker container into the true NAS file system and sure enough there is docker uh, the container ID and then CP and there's a certain syntax for that so let's uh, take a look at how this works now we're gonna get into a shell here and in this shell we are connected uh, into true NAS scale okay so all I did was an SSH into my true NAS scale system and I've uh, changed into the directory of docker app data okay so let's take a look at that so we are in home okay let's just create a new directory here I'm gonna call this test and we're gonna switch into the T 
test folder. And we can see it's empty. Now, I want to see all the Docker containers that are running. So I have to go Docker PS. Uh, and that's going to show all the Docker containers running. So Home Assistant is running on this ID right now. Okay. So Home Assistant, blah, 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 that version. So I'm going to copy that container ID. And now that uh, Docker container CP command, I typed it earlier. I'm going to bring it up here. So now I'm going to go Docker CP the image ID or sorry the container ID that I got from up here and then the path which we read uh, we saw before uh, in the home assistant settings is slash config so let's go back to that okay so the ID of the container a colon and then the full path to what we want to copy, the source. So slash config slash, and then where I want to copy it to on the TrueNAS file system. So remember, Docker is running on TrueNAS scale. So by executing this command, I'm copying all the contents of config to the current directory, which we are in this Docker app data slash test. So if we copy that, that's going to run for a while. Successfully copied. And there's the config folder. And there you can see we have copied all of the configuration data from the running instance, this instance, which I have security cameras, I have Nest, thermostat, all kinds of stuff in here. Okay. And that's right here under this URL. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do sort of a, an example. I'm going to stop that instance of Home Assistant, which is running on IX volume, where all the configuration is uh, managed internally by TrueNAS scale. But the moment I delete this row, if I were to click this delete button over here and get rid of this Home Assistant, all the configuration, all the work that I did inside the app is gone which would be pretty annoying but now if I go over here um, and actually I guess what we can do what we what we will do is we will show an example if I now go and let's go back to apps scroll up discover apps and we are going to install a new instance of Home Assistant. Okay, install another instance. Here we go. Okay, XYZ, pick a random database password, whatever. Actually, I'm not sure if we have to pick the same one or not. Um, the important part down here is instead of picking IX volume, I'm going to pick host path. And now I'm going to pick the path to where we just created. We created this test folder. We create, and then there's this config folder that we copied over. Okay. So that's what we pick. So host path, and we've pointed to that path. So now we can, we have to give this a name, sorry, Home Assistant YouTube. And now I'm going to install this, and let's see what happens. I left all the defaults the same, just like the other ones. And while that's going, I will quickly click here. And you can see this is because I stopped this image. It's not showing those security cameras. Just to show that uh, the instance that we'll be bringing up here in a second is, in fact, this new one. And I have not configured this Home Assistant container. 
but I did point it to that folder in the data set, which is a copy of the of the Home Assistant uh, configuration from my initial setup. So now it's deploying Home Assistant YouTube. When this comes up, we should be good to just browse to the web UI and it should have all the configuration that we copied from Home Assistant. So we're just gonna wait for that and we'll resume the video in just a second. All right, let's see if this works. Home Assistant YouTube, continue, and perfect. So it just takes a little while for the cameras to pull in, but it has all the configuration of my cameras. It has my thermostat, security cameras, everything. All the configuration is there, my username, my dashboards, everything's good to go. So that is pretty cool. So that's kind of showing you uh, an idea of the difference between IX volume versus host path. I showed an example of how you can extract configuration information from a Docker container to switch over because once you've created these, you cannot edit them, right? So if I go to this home assistant, I click edit, you'll notice when I go down to that configuration area, it's grayed out, right? I cannot change the config storage from IX volume to something else. It's, it has to be done at creation time. So I showed how to extract the configuration from an existing app that's not set up the way you want, pull it into one that is set up the way you want. Now you have a backup of that configuration. Fabulous. Now we're going to talk about mapping volumes in another app. So um, in the other video, we showed this membership signup app. And this app, uh, just to mention uh, some of the concepts I said at the beginning, I want to keep a copy of uh, the application log as well. I want to, um, everything that this application outputs, there's a folder where it outputs PDF files when you execute. I want that information to be persisted in a data set when I restart this application. I don't want all the changes made while the application runs to be lost when I restart this app. If I have to upgrade it for some reason or whatever, I'm going to lose any log files. I'm going to lose any uh, created PDFs because remember, any changes made while it's running will be lost and restart. So let's see how I did that. So you, you need to learn similar to Home Assistant where I had to go to the Home Assistant website and do a little bit of work to find out where is that configuration stored. Uh, obviously, because I wrote the membership signup app, I know a little bit about how it works, but I could look up the documentation. Um, I happen to know that the output folder, um, let's take a look if I, I'll just go into the shell. I'll show how this works. So right now it's running. It is installed in an app folder. I do a ls we can see that there's this application log. Application log. Okay. And we can see it's it's you know a bunch of things have happened there. We can also see that there is an output folder. Okay. So all the PDFs that are created when this application is running. I want it, these to be persisted and saved. So what I can do is I'm looking at the folder that I'm in. I'm in the app folder and I know uh, that there's this application.log file and there is this output folder. What I wanna do is I wanna map that file, this folder to something on the file system of my data set. Okay, so let's talk about that. So I created, first thing you wanna do is have an area where this stuff is kept. So for me, uh, I just did it from the command line. So in here, I created this membership signup folder. And as you can see, 
I created application.log and I created an output folder. Okay? So how is how do I map this membership sign up to map those two things over to my data set? Scroll down to the bottom and under storage config. Okay. Now this is a custom Docker app. Okay. So which basically means you can install any Docker image, not just the ones that are natively supported by TrueNest Scale. So this is a Docker image I created, and I went here and I picked for storage, configuration storage, I picked host path, and I mapped the path. This is now in the Docker image. And remember I talked about it's under app slash output, that output folder. I actually want that to point to this location in my data set. Okay, so I showed this in the shell here. I'm in this Docker app data membership sign up, and there's this output folder. So I'm mapping from the Docker app to my data set. And what that's going to do is any files that get created in that output folder are going to be stored in my data set. So when I restart or if I delete, that Docker container, any data in this folder is still going to be there because it's not, uh, it's not exclusively just a part of the app. It's in my data set. So that's the output folder. Now, what about that application log? It's not a folder. Well, it's done the same way. So right here, I specify the mount path, which is the file that I want controlled for my data set as opposed to the one in the Docker container, and. I just point it to application.log. So now, when the application is logging information, it will do it in this application log, as opposed to the application log in the Docker container. Now, for all intents and purposes, if I were to go into a shell uh, window in the app here, and uh, go into the shell and look at the application log and look at the output folder. The Docker container has no idea that it's stored somewhere else. It just thinks it's part of the, the app in the container and, and off it goes. But because we did the volume mapping, we now are able to persist that information even if we delete this, even if we restart it, upgrade it, whatever. And essentially that's how it works. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, uh, Hope you guys get some value from this video. I know it kind of went on long, but I wanted to get a little bit more advanced into some pretty cool things you can do to customize the behavior of your Docker apps. Um, as I showed with this one, uh, this particular app and many PHP apps, which this is a PHP app, are configured by uh, a file called config.php. So just like I did this mapping for the application log, you could map a config.php file in your data set to the container and then control the configuration outside of the Docker container in a manner that's uh, much more useful. Anyways, hope you guys get some value from the video. Catch you on the next one.